space is for everyone. With Martinez Fotodovas and Michael Chinchiladze of Altair Enterprises. Welcome back to the Cosmic Companion. This week we're going to talk about the future of space exploration as we build the first human habitations beyond the confines of Earth. Okay, okay, we're not going to be building now. Bye. Later in the show, uh, we're going to be talking with Martinez Fedotovez and Nika Chinchalaladze about their work developing and promoting science education in Eastern Europe and beyond. Now, on the 12th of April 1961, Yuri Gagarin became the first man in space, and the first woman, Valentina Tereshkova, followed a little over two years later. Since then, around 600 people have reached beyond the limits of our home planet. These first forays for our species beyond the atmosphere usually entail flights by jet pilots, engineers, doctors, and scientists. The Artemis program from NASA, designed to bring human beings to the Moon and Mars, is nearing its first uncrewed uh, test launch. SpaceX envisions sending one million people to the surface of the Red Planet in the coming decades. Fulfilling just 1% of this ambitious goal would put a human population the size of Sedona, Arizona on the face of another world. These populations, sheltered from the harshness and harshness of space solely by human-made shelters, will need to be fed, housed, educated, entertained, and they will need to receive other essential services. Providing all the needs of such a sizable community requires participants from a wide range of disciplines, from communications to computers to clowns. For those of you out there with chlorophobia, my apologies, but someone, sometime, will send in the clowns. There's got to be clowns. Ironically, the percentage of people farming is likely to go up, leading to a more agrarian society, as colonists learn how best to plant crops in interplanetary outposts. With long-term human habitation of space, new generations will be born, grow up, and perish. Educators, computer coders, and maintenance workers will fill these populations. Each person participating in these communities will need to depend on everyone else. This interdependence is likely to greatly reduce notions of racism, sexism, and national identity within communities in space. Even the idea of nations may one day seem as antiquated to us as ancient city-states do today. Looking deep into the universe, we see backwards in time. And the oldest light in the universe holds secrets to how everything around us will, one day, end. Meanwhile, stars, planets, and galaxies dance in an intricate ballet, occasionally giving birth to life. We are fledgling species just beginning to visit other worlds. We are a way for the universe to understand itself. The Cosmic Companion strives to bring the universe down to Earth, and we depend on your help to make it happen. For information on subscriptions and ways to donate to this program, please visit thecosmiccompanion.net. Thank you. Next up, we talk with Martinez Peritovez and Nika Chinchaladze of co-founders of Altair Enterprises about their work bringing the benefits of space exploration to everyone. This week on the Cosmic Companion, we're delighted to be joined by Martinez Fedotovez and Nika Chinchaladze. They are space entrepreneurs, co-founders and CEOs of Altair Enterprises in the country of in the country of Georgia 
and they're joining us uh, to talk about the future of space exploration and what they're doing to bring it to you, everyone. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. Thank you, Thank James. Thank you, James. Nice to be here. Thank you. So, um, Nico, can you give us a little introduction? What is Altair Enterprises and what is it that you folks are hoping to accomplish? Of course. So, Altair Enterprises is a space education and uh, research organization that aims to enable individuals to pursue careers in the space industry. And what we're seeing right now is all those financial firms and including Morgan Stanley, they're estimating that space industry is going to hit this one trillion mark uh, by global revenue by 2040. Uh, and what's gonna be needed for the space industry in order for that to happen and to support that growth that we see every year that all the new companies are rising up and the companies are growing. One thing that's needed for that is going to be the workforce, the people, the driving force of the growth of the industry and of all the projects. And here's one alternate enterprises. So that's where we come in uh, and we help people to pursue their careers and get this education. So take your education to the new heights. So that's our motto internally in the company. And we help people by several uh, several verticals. So we do uh, bigger conferences. So International Space Convention, which is one of the biggest conferences of the year. It's going to be annual. It's happening this year in Turkey uh, in September 9, 10, 11. It's going to bring together all the leading companies uh, from the space industry, from different sectors, from upstream, downstream, hardware and software services that they provide that. Uh, and then we also do smaller events so locally uh, than we do. We have partnered before with the educational institutions. We have worked together with the students. Uh, we have recently also published a book. Uh, it's a small booklet. So Space Business 101, Seven yeah. Steps to Position Yourself in the Next Trillion Dollar Industry. Uh, the, the booklet is primarily aimed towards the future entrepreneurs. It gives uh, our personal perspectives and experiences and uh, the, on different areas, on different seven steps that you need to undertake in order to successfully establish your company in the space industry and how to stand out from the competition and uh, how to also stay within the frame of the space sustainability. So that's the message of this booklet. And we're also uh, currently in the process of developing uh, or online platform that will be offering on-demand courses for, that will be accessible globally for individuals to get the education in a shorter periods of time to the specific subjects that they would like to get without actually leaving their home. Hmm. It's fascinating, such valuable, such valuable work. And uh, Martinez, can you tell us how did Altair Enterprises begin? What was the vision that started this all off? Well, I would love to say, I would love to say probably with the Big Bang, but probably I'll, that wouldn't be true. Uh, you know, so it started obviously as, as all the businesses, uh, product services starts with the idea. And, and that idea kind of went back to, as also Nika uh, mentioned prior to us recording this interview, us working in a nonprofit organization, we, we mm. met in a in a very interesting ways, and I think that's a message for people, as probably we heard this message before, seek and you'll shield find, right? So that's that applies also in space, by the way, uh, because Absolutely. I was also actively seeking, as, as Nick also mentioned, not being native uh, Georgian, uh, I decided to look up some local associations and companies, uh, individuals who are involved in space, because I knew that, that we can do something here locally. Uh, there wasn't much presence uh, currently at that time. And uh, just by obviously by by that by default and by the luck, uh, you know, found some people, and that kind of one led to another. And obviously, Nika was part of organization nonprofit that he was running at that time. Yeah. And long story short, we made a, a few meetings with his group, with the team. We sat down, we talked about some plans, ideas, what we could do, uh, and and kind of one thing led to another. Obviously, uh, we wrote it also in a booklet that that's always you know a, both of our advice that. Uh, you know, business relationship, if you have an idea right now, if you're listening and you think about working on something, creating a business or a project, and if you don't think you can pull pull it off by yourself, which, you know, if it's a big idea, you probably will need somebody else. Absolutely. So it, business is just like a marriage. So that means you need to go to more than a couple of dates before you consummate the marriage, right? So Absolutely. we did exactly that. We went to, to more than a couple of dates 
Uh, we, we continued to work on a nonprofit. We did smaller events. We did many different things uh, uh, inside of the space industry. And we kind of, you know, uh, get to know each other a little bit more. And we understood, that, okay, we have different strengths that we can, you know, put together in one place. And, you know, that got to uh, alter uh, enterprises, the company that it is today. And also that's developing and we'll continue to improve ourselves personally, uh, obviously, and, and to continue to grow the company from there. Hmm. Hmm. It's such, I, I love origin stories like that. It just, everything seems to come together. Just, you know, yes. other kids met sometimes, you know? Um, and so I think when some people look at the future of space, they may think, oh, I can never go into space. I know um, I'm not an astronaut, but there are going to be a lot of careers out there some of which we have at home now and some which people may have not have heard of but what are what are some of the careers careers in space that are coming up in the future you don't want to i guess i'll take this one martinez if you don't mind take it over yeah Right. So space industry, as we mentioned before, is uh, an ever-growing, ever-changing organism. It's an ecosystem that's growing day by day. And every year we see new companies with new innovative ideas and approaches that are popping up. And obviously space industry, by with that growth, uh, it needs needs more people. It needs hmm. different, different niches. So everybody, before it was like that. So if you wanted to be... Uh, in the space industry, so you either had to be an astronaut or you had to be a very strong aerospace engineer. So that that was, or or an astrophysicist, right? To that to that point, that was pretty much the conception before. But again, now new space has shown that we need more than just that. We need people from different different uh, backgrounds. We need people who are again scientists, engineers, who are astronauts. We need business owners, entrepreneurs in the space industry who are actually leading the show, space industry needs more investors as well. We need anything starting from the marketing to financial analysts, to uh, data analysts, data engineers. We need, even the cleaners are necessary part of the, of the space industry. So the cleaners that are in charge of preparing and cleaning the clean rooms, where again, the construction of the satellites and the rockets stages, they happen in the manufacturing. So. All of that. And again, in the future, now there's a lot of great projects in the pipeline also with the moon missions that's coming up or with the Mars exploration and that is uh, already on the horizon, right? right. So it's going to be very exciting with uh, a lot of different industries also and segments popping up like, uh, uh, like uh, for example, commercial space flight is now available. So there's going to be uh, also plans with the lowering of the cost of the space launch. It's also going to be becoming a reality that uh, space stations will be uh, again more, more and more common. There's going to be there's already I believe plans for the space uh, hotels and the space uh, manufacturing uh, again uh, stations. Uh, and there's going to be also asteroid mining that will be common and generally space exploration. So there's many many different people that we need uh, and many different people that we need to support the growth of those companies and to support those companies growing and uh, showcasing themselves from the marketing standpoint, as well as from the legal side, because legal side is also a bit trailing behind uh, on the, in the industry uh, with, all those, uh, with all those growth of the satellites that currently happening, the amount of satellites that have been put out into the orbit with the more frequent launches, the launch rates, uh, the orbital or suborbital launches that we have, and this is kind of a gray area to this point, because after the 60s and 70s, the space laws haven't been really edited much. And mm -hmm. that's why there's no proper way to regulate those launches and those uh, satellites that are being put out into the orbit. And this process has led to the accumulation of the space debris, which is a serious problem nowadays that's, well, fortunately being tackled by some of the companies and being actively discussed right now. But we need space lawyers as well. So that was that discussion was to that point. And we need all the different people from all the different backgrounds in the space, including podcast hosts and science communicators like yourself, James, and many other people as well. Yeah, thank you. Um, and I'll give this one to you, Martinez. What is the greatest promises of space? That's the ultimate question. I mean, there is no promise. 
there is no promise. There is only hope. That yeah, what is the, where, yeah, what is the hope? Then? The, the hope that the, the hope that the evolution, the natural progress as, as we have as human beings, right? Uh, assuming the Darwin theory, right? Uh, we continue to evolve. So the natural evolution, we either go deeper, we go into oceans, we, we, we go into caves and oceans, and there's only a limitation of that, or we're going to deep space, right? Mm -hmm. So natural evolution, going back to that history, going back to the nature of humans, we are naturally explorers, right? So, so now going back to that and thinking about that, so I think that's a natural progression of things, right? Especially where we look what's happening with the technology and there's different theories now, again, tying in with AI, and we talked about that briefly also before the call, uh, so I think it, that that hope uh, that, you know, we can become multiplanetary species one day, right, because of that evolution and progression, us as species to uh, uh, actually understanding the, the meaning. So maybe one day that question, even though it's a great question, won't be there anymore. Right. Mm. So 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 doing things and moving to that direction, because uh, I think in, in nature, uh, the, the growth is is the thing. Right. So so everything that we see us, you know, there is there is nothing uh, in, on this planet that stays still. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and, you know, so why do we want to stay still? Right. Because if, if, if uh, in life. If we take it to the personal level of somebody who's listening and, you know, like you think, okay, like I want to stay, stay in the same spot. So two things are going to happen. I mean, look, you're either going to get pulled by the gravity, that, that line is going to go down, or you're going to move it up, right? And you're going to progress up, you're going to grow, right? So nobody wants to stay flat. I mean, you, you, you either, as I said in the booklet, you either, uh, uh, you know, you're either bored or you're bored to death, you know, one of the options, you know, so... Uh, so I think that natural progression towards seeking for answers, right? Because there's a lot of people. I mean, if we probably look it up, I don't know if you had any people, my apologies for not doing enough due diligence on your own podcast. If you had any people talking about UFOs, that's a big discussion, right? There's people always seeking those answers. And I had a pleasure talking with people from SETI Institute, for example, right? And, and that's for me personally, even coming from the business side, just the, the curiosity, the hope that maybe there's something out there, right? Uh, I think that's the that's kind of the path where humans wants to go and find these answers, right? If it's diving deep into oceans and now kind of through natural progression in technology and human uh, behavior and understanding that we, you know, there's limitations here. Okay, let's go out there into space. And obviously we did enough research to understand what resources that are out there. Uh, what does uh, presence on Mars means for the humankind, right? So I'm going out mm. there in, in deeper space and finding the, the rest of the answers. I mean, it's it's very exciting when you think about that, right? And hopefully some of the individuals who, who are watching this or listening to this also got uh, got the bug, right? That look, there, there's something out there and the curiosity, you know, got them because that's how I started my personal journey, right? The, the curiosity, the idea that uh, where when we all grew up, right? When we were at a certain age, five, seven, eight, right? So we, when somebody asks us, what do you want to be? The, mm. the, the one of the answers is going to be an astronaut, right? Mm. So, and suddenly when we start growing up, we get in front of these, all these um, so-called uh, things that we have to do in our, in our lives, kind of uh, the, the uh, obligations, like we have to find the job, we have to plant a tree, get, build the house. I mean, all these different things that we have in a society, right? So, so those things, you know, put us in a place where we cannot dream and, and, and be ourselves anymore. So I think there's a lot of dreams that got buried, maybe a lot of different scientists that never been actually, you know, never applied their work uh, uh, in, a, in a real world, uh, just because, you know, some people told them, look, you need to grow up, you need to start, to, you know, stop, stop thinking about that, you need to live in a real life, whatever the real, real life is. And then obviously through the journeys sometimes, so they're probably going to be an audience who are probably listening to their 12 or 15 or 25 or 40. So the message uh, for, for, um, for me here to you would be, look, the, the, the change can happen right now and it can be instant. The decision to continue to move on and, and make a commitment, which requires time and money and, and resources, that's a different thing. But, but to understand that the opportunity is there now for you to be in that new space economy, and obviously to, to, to create the hope for people because all the services, as Nika mentioned, if it's upstream or downstream, they're also creating a hope for people. And obviously not only that, they're actually providing services 
that we can see. And the reason why we're having this call today is also because of the space, right? Mm -hmm. All the cameras, the one third of the cameras that we see right now being used for all these selfies and TikTok videos, one of the third of those are being used because, again, of the small cameras that JPL, NASA, right. again, space companies invented to, to do space imagery, right? right. So all these different spinoffs that we forgot, it happened because of that. It happened because of the speech that was done right by, by uh, John F. Kennedy about that there is a hope we can go we can do this we can do big things right so there was only hope at that time and then obviously through the time it proved that we can do it so so now I mean we did all these things and so now let's see what else we can do in this in this new space industry. That's so Martinez explained it perfectly James so I'll add also my take on this question because I think it's a very important one. So uh, from my uh, stand standpoint, there's uh, two points that are ultimately associated with the promises of the space exploration. So one is obviously the uh, curiosity that Martinez mentioned, because we humans, we always have been curious. Uh, from the ancient times, we've been looking up at the stars and uh, contemplating, okay, so what are those uh, tiny sparkling dots on the clear night sky, right? Right, and uh, right. this curiosity itself can be argued that it, it led to the development and the evolution of the human, again, thinking process and the way we operate today. So that, that was one differentiating thing that helped humans to be where we are nowadays, right? So that's one thing. And we have been tackling for the, the thinking men and women have been tackling with the questions of, are we alone or in the universe or what's out there, right? So the, what is our true purpose of existence in this universe right because it's mm -hmm. it's feels like it's very lonely it feels like we're alone and that brings us to the second point right of uh, preserving the life because as far as we know so far we have not detected any extraterrestrial life so as far as we know there's only one life then that is again terrestrial life the earth life and it is our uh, again uh, obligation to preserve that uh, through becoming multiplanetary to mitigate the risks of going extinct. Uh, and uh, it's in our nature to explore and conquer, as Martinez, uh, Martinez mentioned. With Alter, we're working on, on uh, different verticals. Anything around, again, the main theme as our company is, is, is space education. And we provide that through different, different verticals inside of that. So one of the verticals has already been done, which is the International Space Convention where people mm. can attend in person or online, they, they can get access to big in, big companies, individuals out there. So maybe, you know, shout out to some of those companies like, you know, uh, Ariana Space, which obviously a lot of those pe people, so the ones who are listening heard about launching Jim's Web. So they're also right. coming in person and they're gonna be talking about their services and, and whatnot. Many different, again, upstream, downstream companies that provides, let's say, if it's downstream, they provide geospatial data for different uh, different structures, infrastructures uh, that benefits here, things on a planet, if it's agriculture, if it's maritime, if it's transportation, if it's IoT, a lot of things. And then upstream, launching anything into Spain, uh, access low cost uh, from dedicated launch place, obviously making things convenient with next generation propulsion systems or, or uh, you know, so there's that's one vert vertical which is going to kind of continue to go uh, in in uh, every year. So this is going to be an annual event. It's going to get bigger and better, and we're looking at different venues on how to make it convenient for people so they can attend more interactive. So we have a lot of planning inside of that, and also the the courses that are going to be on demand. This is another vertical that we're currently working on. We have instructors working with us and. If you're currently listening to the podcast, we also, if you would like to become an instructor with us and if you have an experience in this space field that would like to showcase that and, you know, uh, uh, earn earn something, right, with that as well, uh, feel free to get in contact with us and you can obviously find us on social media or by going to alterenterprises.com, uh, check it out what we do. And also we do a lot of small things as well, well, either small or big. Uh, looking at the grand and scheme of things, it could be a little bit smaller, but we also do uh, business consulting for businesses private if it's retraining companies and helping to understand the transition, if there's an irrelevance for them to move into new space economy, we'll also work with the high school, high school students as well and students uh, to kind of help them understand how they can create and work around the projects or, you know, get, helping startups to also succeed because we also have uh, our personal experience, as I mentioned to you before, James, coming from three different industries carrying all this baggage, you know, of, of base, uh, of, of business analytics, understanding how to do business 
ethically, effectively, shorten the timelines, raise capital, talk with people. I mean, there's so many different things that goes into business, as you probably do and know as well, right? Absolutely. So, yeah, you, you, you mentioned that you run your own company. So, so we want to help as much as possible in, inside of that bubble of education, space education, right? So we, we're going to try to do that as best right. as possible, capabilities, obviously taking that education oh. to new heights. Uh, but I'm sure Nika, Nika can add his own personal perspectives and can add something to that. Absolutely. Yeah, so I think Martinez uh, explained it uh, explained it in, in detail. So the, I'm going to just briefly add that. So, so what we're hoping for and what we're aiming for and what we're going to do in the next years is going to be to revolutionize the space education to make it more uh, simple, more uh, affordable and more accessible for the people as, as with the uh, very common and very recently very much discussed theme of space for all. We very much believe that space is the industry where uh, everybody everybody can be included and it's everybody should be included and everybody is needed for the space industry. So to everybody that's uh, listening to this podcast right now, the space industry needs you. So, uh, and uh, it's time to take action as well, if, if, if that's what you would like to do and you probably should. So that's one thing. And we have some other projects also in the long, long-term pipeline that's uh, going to be also geared towards uh, changing the way we do education in the space industry. But that's, again, uh, as an intrigue for now, as we cannot disclose it yet. But that's right. going to be coming very soon. So stay tuned. Uh, you can follow us on the social media or you can stay updated on our newsletter by subscribing to that uh, on our website, altrenterprises.store. And... Uh, Yep. So that sums it up pretty much what we're going Great. to be doing next year. Great. Well, thank you both for being on the show. It was fabulous talking with you. Thank, thank you, James. Yeah. Pleasure. For and uh, that was Martinez Veratovez and Nika Chichiladze, space entrepreneurs, co-founders, and CEOs of Altair Enterprises. During the opening years and decades of living in space, people will need to become proficient in a wide range of professions. An outpost with just 12 people can ill afford to have any one person assigned solely to fire prevention, for instance, despite the absolute need for such talents. Each person living in such habitats will need to have emergency and medical training as well as preparing for psychological aspects of interacting with others in such close quarters. That's a lot of hats. Societies need people from a wide range of professions for civilizations to function. This basic fact will not change as our species moves out into space. But the way this comes about will evolve into new forms. Most of the careers we know today will still exist within the space colonies of the future, yet most occupations will be greatly altered by their new environments. For instance, at the same time truck drivers on Earth lose ground to automated vehicles, the field of transportation within large habitats in space will begin to flourish. Next week, we're going to be talking about doing astronomy from home with Alex Curry, co-founder of Telescope Live. If you ever wanted to use a large telescope under some of the darkest skies on Earth, you can, and we're going to show you how. Make sure to join us starting on 9th of August at thecosmiccompanion.tv. Also, check out Telescope Live at telescope.live. Use promo code COSMIC to get 50% off your first two months of a silver or gold membership plan. If you enjoyed this episode, please comment, download, and share the show on your favorite social media. You know the shit. Visit us at the Cosmic Companion anywhere. Clear skies.